Hello, everyone. Well, everyone can hear me clearly. Everyone, uh, the speakers presented some good topic, and I'm just curious about cross screen. Okay, uh, so um, uh, I need to show this slide because my company sponsors my trade player. So, in case you want to post about me in social media, make sure to put this slide in it. Okay, so my topic is about SSS curiosity. It's a series of solving process fitting cases that I encountered during engagement uh, with the clients during my pet testing and also when doing bug bounty. A little bit about me, about me. I'm Ahmad or people call Ashraf or anything. Uh, during working hours, I'm a lead security consultant for ZS Security Limited. It's a New Zealand based company in New Zealand. Currently, I'm working remotely with them uh, from Malaysia. So after working hours, I'm just spamming around in Twitter. You can see if you follow, if you guys follow me, you can see I keep retweeting things. A founder and director of Rehack uh, is a Malaysian-based company. We are still uh, at a baby phase. Father of four little monsters. Yeah, it's very tired. So uh, in ba Bounty. Uh, about on this scene, I am been known as Yapare. Uh, I started my journey since 2013. In 2013 to 2015, I focused mainly in Google and background. I've been top five for a few years. I can't remember what. Currently, when last night I checked my profile, I'm currently at 13. I'm not sure why, even though I already stopped doing my working for two years. Uh, also, I'm uh, 2021, I was a rookie of the year for Senec, and yeah, that's it, nothing, nothing special. Why cross-up scripting? Uh, to be honest, I'm not sure what to present today, so I asked Nick here. Nick, Nick uh, you probably know, is one of the great guys in uh, Senec. Uh, he asked me to submit about cross-up scripting. I said, why cross-up scripting? So Nick said that uh, there are many people who want to know my approach during cross-up scripting. Uh, okay. I think that's weird, it's basically it's just a common one. And another thing is that uh, mainly when I'm hunting, I'm just focusing on cross-site scripting. As you can see in my crowd, 90% of the submission I do it manually, and even in Google, 100% of them I submitted without using any automated scanning. The reason why I don't use automation or automated scanning is not because I don't trust on them, it's just that I don't know programming, that's the reason. So I'm not good in coding. You ask me how to do a print hello in any coding, any language, I couldn't do that. So sorry about that. So a little bit basic about cross scripting. Uh, many people know that there are many types of cross scripting: uh, reflected, permanent, blind, dome-based, flash-based, self-reflected, uh, whatever. There are, there are many. And basically, everyone know how, what the famous pillow is, script alert, cross scripting, some like that. You just look for any input forms, and put this below, and if there's a pop up on it, let's say that's a cross splitting. But there will be a case where you inject it, but there's no pop up at all. But when you see the source page, you can see the pillar is there. Why is it? So, this is what uh, that I'm going to present today, uh, where when I counter this, why I'm, I'm pushing myself to think, to, to think why it couldn't, uh, the, my pillow that I injected not working. So uh, before we move further, uh, let, uh, this is how my approach is, uh, how I understand process scripting. There are two types of process scripting. Uh, one is what call, I call it the inside tag, where the reflected input is inside the HTML tag. For example, there, there's a, the reflector is inside the input or a hyperlink or iframe, something like that. So it's inside the, the HTML tag that we know. The other one is outside tag, something that is outside from the injection sometimes. Most of the time is at the title, history, span, or as a script. Sort of and how about the payload? The payload actually uh, being split into few sections. Uh, this is how I imagine the things. The first one is the open bracket, uh, not open bracket, the last bracket sign with the tag, the HTML tag, it can be script, it can be image source, it can high frame, everything. Then the event handler, the event handler is like uh, on mouse over or something like that. And the JavaScript, what kind of JavaScript or to execute after the event handler being uh, executed. So there are some of example, like I, I, I put that in, in, the, 
in the beautiful colors, so you can identify which one is the tag, which one is the bandler, and so to speak. And most of the hunters that, uh, that I read in, uh, in their write-up, they usually just fuzzing all the things and put every payload that they can find, they can find in Jihad, you can find in uh, Piss Bean, or it can be from uh, Set List, Word List, so on. But for me, I basically use three characters for the pre-check of it. It's basically less greater, single quote, and double quote. That's it. Why I need just this three character? Because it is vulnerable to process splitting. The first thing that you can see that, let's say we uh, look at the inside type uh, situation, the input is reflected inside that value, uh, value, uh, uh, value, what we call it, uh, it's just written in value. Okay, so in case you, when you put a single code or double code and or less character, you can see that it actually breaks the application. So you can see that if a normal application will load the input word, but if you break it, it shows under that. It's basically you can detect that it's, oh, there's a problem, why it happened like that. That's how I understand the website actually vulnerable to something. It's, uh, so when you know already that it breaks the, uh, the application, then when you put the payload, it's try by one by one, what's the best payload? Basically just on mouse over alert, something like that. So it's already executed. It, Looks simple, uh, no, it's actually simple, but everyone, I'm not sure uh, uh, why it's so uh, special about it. That's why I'm quite confused when Nick asked me to present about cross splitting. But even though it looks simple, I found this similar thing quite a few times in Google, as an example here, in the Google Locker. You can see that inside the, if you can see the source page, I use single quote. If you are using a, uh, uh, if you put this less greater sign, the, the that character be properly encoded. You can uh, from there you might feel that oh it's not vulnerable. And if you put double quotes, it's going it was encoded as well. But when you put a valid YouTube ID and with a single quote, it breaks the code, it breaks the application. So from there I said that oh it's actually vulnerable to process thing, just with a single quote. So yeah, one single code, one exercise in Google, 3,000 for me. That's one of our example how just with this character, three character, I can determine the website actually vulnerable to process splitting. So the first one is case zero. I put case zero, especially because I I, I do import property for free uh, for, during my free time, so I can't fight with all these competitive hunters that do automation and thing. And I just want to focus on uh, something that uh, I've already that really easy for me to process and that. So whenever I try to attempt anything and I can see probably it's break your record, I stop. I stop spending my time anymore. I proceed. Similarly, when you see something like this, proceed. I don't I don't want to spend more time on it because basically it's almost impossible. And this has been documented inside uh, the pop swigger uh, cheat sheet as well. You can look at that. There are great examples of uh, what type of situation that process killing will not happen. And there, uh, these are some other uh, situations that might be impossible for you to uh, continue with the exploitation. So next one, uh, oh, okay, I'll just put it in a minute. Uh, the first case is uh, the simple or simple web or detection. There will be time that when you do pet testing or hunting, you will notice that it's an error that is not a 404 error or something like that. It's something that, an error that actually coming from a device. So example, it blocks script alert payload. So when you detect it blocks script alert, easy, just use a different payload. But even though it looks easy, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, interesting because Google as well actually try to block based on what we call a, a denial listing approach. Like in this case, in a Google Map Maker, I tried to use a, a hyperlink. It's not working. You can see the input reflected there. You can see that I, it's uh, it's being uh, they filter out all the other after the a h filtering. But the thing is, when I use iframe, it works. So that's how we go. It, there's no special magic. There's no URI encoder, everything. Just use simple payload. It's still working. So this also 
three thousand dollar by Google. That's some example. The easy example. We move a little bit. You can see that that icon is getting uh, slightly uh, downward. Uh, it means that it's getting harder now. The case two is the web detection that forbids or prevent all attempts through get request or push request. For example. Here is an example, uh, the input being reflected outside of the tag, inside the title, I think, in And you can see that my input, my value, the test, as a test, appear in the website. But whenever I try to, when I try to insert uh, any cross security payload, iframe, script alert, cross uh, YF, uh, body, and thing, I got blocked. This is one of the examples of the an error that actually uh, triggered by uh, what we call a, a special device like IPS or WAP or anything. You can see, you can actually identify that. But even though they block all my attempt uh, through the GET request by simply using POST request, I got pass it. So even though uh, why I why might some of you might ask me? It's so simple. Someone actually can actually can do that the same way. So why it's happening is because, it was because uh, this vulnerability actually discovered in an uh, application that using a big name product like Oracle, VMware, some of like that. So most of the hunters that I know, when they see this kind of name, brand name, they say, that, oh, this must be secure. But for me, I always try to focus on all these big names because I know no one going to check on them probably less of them going to check on this product. So I tend to spend some of my time focusing on this product. Uh, you can see here there are few number in internet. Some of you that internet probably noticed the background over there. So I found lots of the internet. Yeah, it's basically, uh, this was found in a product by Oracle. I can't remember what the product's name is. So they hit from them, and uh, I can't remember how much I obtained just by replacing the method from get to post, or post to get, and I pass all of them. The case three is the most annoying part, I would say, because it blocks most of the characters, some of them. And some people say, there's, there are some people of friends saying that whenever you encounter a website that only being uh, prevented with where or filter, it probably just a complex reject. So if any one of you understand rejects, not like me, probably it's a good advantage for you guys. This is one why why it is funny when you couldn't use any uh, known payload like script, uh, iframe, image source and everything. So what I did usually when I counter this situation is first I'm going to start with testing the HTML tag only. If if I by just inserting this attachment tag and there's no web detecting or it can be proceed, that's a chance. So I'm going to proceed with including the event handler and the JavaScript code. So then we look at the response. So if the response, uh, first, uh, the first uh, point is a common pattern that we use. Is it fail? We try to use a different event handler. Like on error is fail. We try almost almost over. If it's failed, try to not use event handler first. See if the source, at least the source, being uh, being accepted. If it's success, then you try to use some on event handler that's not valid, some on fubar or on track com, something like that. What because we want to test the what what kind of detection they, they are doing. So how usually because I don't know how to coding, I do not do many programming automation. I use WebSuite. So I just send this to Intruder, and then I grab all the event handler as available in the uh, pod switcher, pod switcher, which is it, download it, and make it as a word list. Then fuzz it. So when you fuzz it, you can see that there are few event handler that actually be missed sometimes. This is how I found uh, the issues in RSA. RSA Archer is a product being used in organizations to Detect vulnerabilities, but I found vulnerabilities inside your product. So, yeah. So, from this uh, vulnerabilities, I uh, able to steal the admin cookies. From there, escalate to become an admin. From the admin, there's an option for them to execute commendation. That's it. 
So uh, make automation, uh, make a script for that, yeah, that's how I pawn, I say, actually. But what if the HTML tag is not working? Any HTML tag you put, IMG, iframe, it's been blocked. Try to use non-existent HTML tags. Full, full bar, uh, whatever, young body, something like that. If it's accepted, try again to do the similar uh, ID just now and try to brute force the HTML tag. That might be missed by the wife. Similarly, send it into the Use the word list from Pop Swigger, Fuzzy, and see what kind of HTML tag be accepted. If let's say none of them accepted, but they still as uh, but the when you use unknown like the the less better full still accepted, did you know that there's a process called payload that don't uh, still going can be executed without a HTML uh, a valid HTML tag such as such as on pointer enter, you can use any HTML tag using on pointer enter and still can be executed. Similarly, I found in Sinai, a big product name and the numbers of them uh, bypass it because no one ever, uh, f no one check on it and then no one try to attempt to bypass it. Uh, yeah, that's how, that's how I usually I make money from the OT. Uh, next one. Case four. It's one another annoying part, annoying situation. Uh, when you, most of the time, sometimes you can detect that the parentheses couldn't be used. So when you want to provide a proof of concept, sometimes parentheses can be used. So you can still have another option like alert using back tick, on error uh, alert throw something, uh, location name something like that. But when uh, the reflection occurs inside the tag and you can't use equal sign, this will be almost impossible. Basically, stop it, it's it probably impossible to execute. I think maybe you can convert it to become HTML injection to get some minor bounty, something like that. There's a situation uh, in, uh, there was a case where, similar like this, where the injection point occur at the window location is already inside the script and it's, uh, I can manipulate the window location value by default, you can bypass it, and you can just execute this uh, alert using the dimension payload because it's going to break the single single point, and then you insert a new JavaScript expression, then you can see the alert. But unfortunately, alerts not working. Was not working during the time. I'm not sure why. So I assume that because the parenthesis is not allowed. What I did is that I fuzzing all the special characters available in our keyboard and see what kind of special character being accepted. So these are some of the, uh, I think this is the only accepted characters. So using these only characters, I need to figure out how to make a proper uh, proof of concept. Because in Senate, especially if you don't have any POC, they will not accept it. So you need to uh, show that how uh, the payload will, will be able at least to demonstrate to steal a uh, document cookie or the document name of the application. So mm, sometimes I use this payload because it works more the time and it looks like I use all the characters that being accepted and I don't break, I don't uh, try to use any character that not being liked by the uh, detection. But unfortunately it's still not okay. The reason why, because another thing that being, most of the time being included inside the WAF or any filter devices too, they're going to check JavaScript dot something documents like that. So I'm trying, uh, because of that, I try using different payload, uh, like window.location and redirect to a different URL. This pro probably not a process free, it's more like a redirect payload. But when uh, I did this, Supposedly, it should work, but I forgot that there's a slash over there. Unfortunately, without the slash, you actually can still redirect them, like using the HTTP double code, and then just put your without the slash. It still works sometimes. Uh, then, how am I going to make a proper POC showing that I'm able to exfiltrate something if, let's say, a victim visited the website? This is a common way that people are going to use, they put a URL and then they put the things that they want to exfiltrate after the URL. 
But can any of you detect what's the problem with this payload? No one? Okay. Come here. No, it's not. It's not because of that. But the thing is, if you notice after the URL, there's a slash as well. So it's not being accepted. So now it keeps forcing me to think what are the ways to do that. Unfortunately, it's, uh, no, fortunately, there's a way to, if you encounter this kind of situation, you can instead put the data that you want to exfiltrate as the subdomain of the domain. Like how you do a DNS exfiltration using common gestures on that. It works, yeah, and I able to bypass it. And from here, I, because I'm able to find this kind of payload, I bypass the web, and there are a few other parameters that I discovered in this target, and I got some good amount as well. This is my final slide. It's actually a good list for everyone. It's a CVE 2122 uh, 21373. It, I haven't published the BLC yet to any internet. So this is my first time showing the BLC. So this occur, uh, this uh, already discovered in uh, Oracle e-business product. So you probably already can uh, detect that OA underscore HTML team most of the time. So that's the payload. You can see that I don't use any special payload, it's just a normal payload. It only blocks if you put alert and parenthesis, but if you use alert, parenthesis, and then include a bracket inside it, you bypass it. So this is another option, and this already has been submitted to Oracle, and they already fixed it in the latest version, but there are a few more targets that are vulnerable to this. So for those that have a good recon skill, just find target and try to use the payload. It's basically work. I found it in few Uber and also few at and and a few, few others. Probably in there are lots in Sinek if you, can, uh, if you have the account today. I believe that's all for me because there actually there's more. I probably are going to save a bit for my next presentation. And that's it. If anyone of you have any question, please let me know because I'm leaving tonight. <laughs> so uh, yeah, anyone have a question about process scripting? It's a basic topic. One, one, two, three. Thank you very much.